Gray is here on the Blaze Radio Network. Thanks for joining us. Lot to discuss, as usual. Donald Trump secured the $175 million bond yesterday. All right. So that's taken care of. Now they don't, they can't confiscate like Trump Tower or any of his holdings. But he secured the $175 million bond through Knight Specialty Insurance Company owned by the privately held Hankey Group, whose chairman said he considers himself a Trump supporter. I don't know why he'd say that, because now, mm. watch all hell break loose on him. Uh, he said, this is what we do at Knight Insurance, and we're happy to be able to accommodate the ex-president in this situation. I'd say it's more of a business de- decision, but I happen to be a supporter also. Wow. it's a brave guy. <laughs> it was a relatively low number, and Donald Trump put up all the collateral in cash. Hmm. Okay, so that's a l- $175 million. It's a low number. <laughs> all right. I guess he was actually involved in the initial discussion to do the $454 million, but hmm. they lowered it, and so now it wasn't a problem, I guess. So anyway, th- at least that's been taken care of for Trump now, and he can proceed with the appeals, trials, and whatever else happens there without having to face seizure of his property. Also, yesterday, the White House Easter egg roll. Uh, and Joe Biden got an escort from Easter Bunnies. Oh, cool. How's Easter Bunnies? Look at that, huh? <laughs> mm, mm, oh, my gosh. Uh, doesn't that... That's adorable. That sets the mood there. Great? Huh? Yeah, yeah. That's and then Joe stuff. jogged to pose for a picture Jogs. showing us just how vigorous he is. Two steps. <laughs> about this Marxist is awkward. Why would you run toward the balcony edge like that? So stupid and weird. Moron, that's why. So weird. Is... Show that again. Yeah. It's just so irritating though. <laughs> <laughs> so weird, dude. Why? Why? Oh, why? Oh, why? Bart. Huh. All right, and he introduced us to a new species, the oyster bunnies. Oh, I love this. This yeah. is fun. And I'm coming down to do that Easter egg roll in just a minute. Thank you all so very, very much. Thanks, everybody. And by the way, huh. say hello to oyster bunnies. Come on up, bunnies. Get say hello to the oyster bunnies. Well, Come on, get in there. No, those are Easter bunnies. No, Where's the okay. oyster? You mock. Pretty big bunny, huh? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. Thank you all so very, very much. Hey, look, he's all got yours. a stutter, a lifelong Present stutter. <sighs> what are you doing? What do you even say there at the end? All right, well, since you're just this right-wing uh-huh. talk host yeah. trying to make the president of the United States look bad. Mm, he doesn't need I, my help for I that. would like to point out there, there's the oyster bunny. Oh, okay. I'm coming down to do that Easter egg roll in just a minute. <laughs> Thank you all so very, very much. Sorry, Thanks, man. everybody. And by the way, yeah. say hello to Oyster Bunnies. Come on up, Say buddy. hello to Oyster Bunnies. Then there they are. Uh. Wow, that's, that's awkward. Good. That's good. Oyster Bunnies. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's good. He's good. Like if, it, if it can't be a religious again, I'm going to say it again. Why do it? Why do this? The only reason for Easter is religious. The only, it's not about bunnies. Oh, it's not. No. So could somebody tell them it's not about bu- bunnies, either Easter or oyster? No bunnies really represent Easter. <laughs> Creepy, too. Though. Creepy. Giant yeah. rabbits. Well, you remember, was it last year where they had to go over and save him, tell him where to go? Oh, we'll get there. Oh, okay. We're going to revisit that. All right, good. Uh, He was also interviewed by Al Roker. Mm. What is so special about this egg roll? Well, what's so special is this this is the people's house. And we expect for over 40,000 people to be here. It's the largest ever. And we just like to open it up to the place and let people see this is their place. A lot of slurring. Oh, my gosh. A lot of babbling and slurring. and I barely know what he said there. He doesn't know what he said. Jeez. And there was more. 
Why should, what do you, what's your message to people about why they've got to engage uh, and get out there to vote? Well, I think people are going to surprise people again. They're going to engage. they overwhelming response from around the road. Look, we have tens of thousands of people contributing five, ten bucks a, 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 a pop. We've opened up a hundred headquarters. We have people waiting to just get engaged. I mean, really? I just think people are so tired of the negativity. Oh, that, my God. <laughs> propagated that they just they just want to get engaged they, they want to change things and i'm optimistic i really am wow <laughs> they're tired of the negativity man so vote for me because i'm not negative at all no 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 oh my word mr positivity is what they call him that's what they call him mm-hmm. yeah that's yeah great guy that's what great. we're going with uh, then he exited the White House. This is fun. And here's what that looked like. Another another awkward moment here. Oh, and he's doing job. the fake jog. He did it again. Ah! I can't take it. <laughs> wow. Such an awkward human being. Oh, man. I have to see that one more time. <laughs> Watch. I mean, in slow motion. He's doing a slow motion jog here. Yeah. <laughs> oh man oh remember how things went at the previous white house i just referenced um remember this one Is it last year or the year before i can't remember the the hey dude the, the years run old together. man this way please okay i think jill was in that costume i really think it was jill was given. I can't. I can't figure out where to go. What do I do? I don't know where to. Oh, yeah, man. because I mean, who else? No low-level staffer is gonna go up to the president. I don't care how feeble and senile he is, and wave their arms at him like, "Go over here." Mm-hmm. I think it was Jill. Now Hunter had Joe duty yesterday, wandering around the yard. So that was fun to see. But uh, no. Mm. He, he's so good with the people. That's sure is. Sure. Yeah, well, here's more uh, goodness from the Easter egg roll yesterday. Oh, no. <laughs> what an awkward human being. <laughs> he just stands there with his mouth open. <laughs> just a... Just, it's... T- uh-huh. And by the way, speaking of Easter... Mm-hmm. What's going on with my lights here? It's like the it's like Easter pastels. It keeps changing color, purple, blue. Mm. We've had some red, and there's been green. If you time it right, things got issues. Just looking for a little variety, I guess. It's it's strange. Spice it, up your. I don't know what's. Yeah, look at there that. It See, it's. Mm-hmm. I. Wow. Okay. Well, happy Easter from my corner of the cave. Uh, also, later inside the press room. This happened. Oh, boy. Oh, it's the Easter... Oh, look at that, huh? We are in hell. Easter Bunny, if you're listening, is at the podium. Yeah, providing more substance Brilliant. than KJP ever could. Really entertaining, too. That's good. It's quality stuff. Now, wait, 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 pay attention. Pay attention to KJP coming in. I want you to see this. Uh-huh. All right, that book is getting so thick. She's not going to be be able to carry it by herself pretty soon. Yeah, She's going to have somebody else on the other side of it. Look at that. St- I mean, that is. Yeah. That there. I, I mean, I'm sorry, and and you don't have any good answers in there, so I don't even know why you're carrying it around. <laughs> if you got up there and and just hopped around like the Easter Bunny did, it'd be the same thing. Uh, she was asked about Easter Sunday, and uh, yeah, the Trans uh, Day of visib- tra- Visibility. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, which <laughs> Biden's denying, right? Oh yeah, he said I didn't do I that. Didn't do that? Well, yeah, who did? Somebody in your administration, somebody on your watch, did that. He's either not the president, yeah. or he is uh, completely clueless, and I think both apply. <laughs> Here's where she was asked about it, though. So the criticism over the transgender day of visibility, um, the White House said that the president uh, wouldn't abuse his faith for political purposes. 
Does the president think that's what Republicans are doing? I mean, look, uh, just a couple of things. And uh, really um, so surprised by the misinformation that's been out there around this. And I want to be very clear. Every year for the past several years, on March 31st, Trans Transgender Day of Visibility is marked. And as we know, for folks who understand the calendar and how it works, oh. Easter falls oh. on different Sundays, right? Every year. Right. And this year it happened to coincide with trans, uh, mm. Transgender Visibility Day. And so that is the simple fact. Oh, that is God. what has happened. Mm. That is where we are. Mm. And I do want to say a couple of things because I think it's important here. Uh, as you just stated in your questions, what we've been hearing out there, a lot of misinformation, mm. misinformation. done on purpose. Done on purpose. Uh, and as a Christian uh, who celebrates Easter with family, President Biden mm. stands for bringing people together oh, and upholding gosh. the dignity and freedoms of every American. Oh, you got to be kidding. Now, sadly, and it's not surprising, right? It is actually unsurprising right? that politicians are seeking to divide and weaken our country with cruel, hateful, and dishonest rhetoric. It is dishonest what we have heard the what? past 24 what? hours. It is untrue What's the dishonesty? what we heard over the weekend. Tell me, what was dishonest? Okay, you de-emphasized and eliminated any religiosity from Easter and instead made this big deal out of transgender visibility day. What? Where's the misinformation? Where's the lie there? What is the deal with this person, yeah. this administration? And did you see how she said... The Biden administration sucks. She's like, hey, it's always March 31st for Trans Day of Visibility. You know, it's Easter that jumps around and decided to, yeah. you know, impose its will on March 31st this year. Oh, my gosh, these people are insufferable. It hops around like a bunny, and that's why we use bunnies on Easter. Because... I like it. Easter hops. I see what you did there. Around. See. These, they're insufferable. They're, oh. This, they're evil. How many days are left? They're evil. Yeah. Have you seen the latest numbers on home affordability in Joe Biden's America? Mm. Look at these numbers. This is posted by Charlie Kirk yesterday on Twitter. X, whatever you want to call it. Um, annual earnings to afford a median priced home. Oh, gosh. January 2021. 75939 Okay. You could get a home. Median priced. Uh, this year, in January, 110871 It's gone up a little bit. Yeah, well, just 46.2%. It's not like it went up 800%, like some things have. Man. Median home price, in January of 2021, $290,248. Uh, now, 412227 a little bit of an increase there in just a couple of years. The national average rent went from $1,639 a month to $1,981 a month. My oh. gosh. How are people going to do it? How can average Americans Put that graphic back up. Do you. it. I want to see something here on that, Joe. Uh, yeah, so you have to make a salary of $110,000 mm -hmm. to, to be afford, able to afford the typical home yeah. In America. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. This is not... Okay. Y you know, you love to, to be able to say you left America better than you found it, and every generation has typically been able to say that. Mm, not anymore. Mm-mm. Sorry, y'all. No, that's just not the case right now. Oh, gosh. Thank you, Joe Biden. Yeah. Uh, who's, you know, trying to bring America back together. He's trying to stop the polarization here. Just a wonderful guy. Tired. Of divisiveness. He's tired of it. <laughs> so. God save the queen, man. Yeah, man. That's right, man. Meanwhile, Muriel uh, Browser, the mayor of Washington, D.C., appeared on CNBC, and she was asked about the crime situation. Oh, okay. So maybe things are more expensive, but, yeah, but we got the, the crime, crime under control around America. Right. Good, 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 good. My daughter's there, and I, I'm yeah. already, I'm, I'm a nervous person already. So she's in her, you know, in her 20s. I already worry. She's, she worries. She's scared. She doesn't feel safe. She, she they had a place broken into, and someone got shot on her, uh, on her block. And she wanted me to just, just ask you, what, what's the answer? Do you, do you have a plan? Is it, is it broken windows that, that you got to do more of that, or, or, or is it more funding for, for well, police? What, what's the plan? Should she feel safe in, in D.C.? 
there, Bowser? Absolutely. And, and this is this is what you should know. I just got an update from my deputy mayor and crime is down among in all categories all right. in Washington, D.C., especially those categories that so troubled us last year with robbery and carjacking down more than 30 percent. So we've done the things that we know will reset our public safety ecosystems. No. <laughs> Our public safety ecosystems. That's a good phrase. They're being reset, so like that's it. good. I like it. You got that going for us. Uh, Here's some of the facts about the crime okay. in our nation's capital All right. that she is overseeing, and I think you're going to find that they're wonderful. Okay. Uh, do we have the graphic? Mm. Uh, I don't know. Do we no. have the graphic? All right. I don't know. Maybe not. Perhaps we don't. Okay. We don't. Nope. I don't, I don't mm. see it here, but okay. they're not good. <laughs> Hashtag they're not good. <laughs> not good. Crime's up in D.C. And speaking of crime, we got to open borders as well. And so we've imported things like Venezuelan gangs, like they have now in Oakland County in Michigan. That's where the Oakland University comes from, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Uh, that won their first game and then got blown out in the... Or no, I don't think they got blown out in the second one. I don't know. Yeah, it was fairly close, I think. But anyway, that's where Oakland is, and uh, we've got... Some situations going on there. Mm -hmm. A team of burglars can go undetected. Months ago, the sheriff formed a task force (laughs) and caught seven people from Chile who'd been breaking in and getting away with millions. Hmm. 800,000 in jewelry and cash from one home alone. The Chilean gangs have been hitting us very hard. Cash, jewelry, very high-end purses, that's Uh pretty much the target. Listen to this. super well trained when they get here. Highly organized. They look like ninjas. They're all masked up, gloves. They oh. each have a backpack with their particular set of tools for their job in the burglary. Even <laughs> using a jammer on wireless alarms, the sheriff recommends hardwiring your alarm system and be sure to turn it on. And be sure to turn it wow. on. Wow. Okay, so, so good. You get Chilean gangs, uh, Venezuelan gangs. Went, yeah, so we're. Chilean. And they have, hmm. each has a specialty in their backpack. It's like you're the glass cutter. <laughs> I'm the D-jammer guy. It's like guy. a movie. It is. It's like it Ocean's is. Eleven. Look, when when you import the third world, you're going to have third world problems. And, I mean, mm-hmm. you've got the gangs. You've got uh, the, the diseases. What do we got? We got a spike in leprosy. We got a spike yeah. in measles. Right. Uh, we got a spike uh, now. Bird in, flu. Uh, d- d- tuberculosis as well. Avian flu uh-huh. just showed up in Texas for the first time. No, I, I don't know if that had anything mm-hmm. to do with illegals coming into the country, yeah. but... I mean, we got all, so many, you know, signs and yeah. disasters well, and, and the, wonders yeah, that the, are occurring right now. Wonders. Yeah, the measles has <laughs> been traced back to a migrant housing center in Chicago. Yeah, we just eradicated it, what, 60 or 70 years ago, mm-hmm. uh, and now it's back. Don't worry about it. It's, it's back now. It's back. And, and this time, and this time, <laughs> it's pissed. This time, it's pissed. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got... Um, uh, I was reading this thing here. It says, uh, prepaid debit cards. We've been talking about that in New York City. <laughs> mm. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, they're going to get a co- okay so it's costing f- the taxpayers $1,440 a month in in handouts uh per migrant family so a cost of $53 million to New York City taxpayers uh hmm. and then this little thing from Citizens Free Press says illegal aliens now receive seven times more cash benefits than military families oh my gosh this is insane. And by the way, wow. um, there was an article mm. uh, the Washington Examiner had that, that showed that 90%, and it's so difficult to get these numbers because the Biden administration isn't honest. Right. Shocker, right? 90% of illegals fly through either Texas or Florida. Mm-hmm. It's not clear because, again, the Biden administration not being honest with us, it's not clear if they're staying in these states, but they're at least going to them initially. Texas and Florida gets ninety percent of the illegals flown into it by this administration. This is a oh, nightmare. Oh wow! This is a nightmare. Jeez. Uh, and now they're having a cow that we're sending them to other places. It's fine for them to dump the burden right here, but it's not fine if we reciprocate just a little bit. That's great. Yeah, it's going really well. Yeah, and and this is happening not only in the United States but every. Western country, yeah, we're, honestly. We're all being overrun. You've got the the lowest birth rate in 150 years for Italy. Yeah, we're below. I just read this yesterday. We're below replacement numbers yeah. in, I don't know, 80 countries around the world or something. 
Yeah. Most yeah. of the major countries are under birth replacement yeah. figures. And, and you've almost got more illegals being born in Italy than natural born <laughs> citizens. And you know oh, the same good. thing's happening here. I oh, mean, yeah. this is. Mm hmm. That's been the case at Parkland Hospital <laughs> in Dallas mm -hmm. for a long time, for decades. They give birth to more illegal alien babies who are now <laughs> citizens of this country than they do to citizen babies. <laughs> So that's great. We're in good shape, y'all. Yeah, no, no. We're good. This is exactly the way a democracy is supposed <laughs> to run. <laughs> that's why they don't last. That's why democracy doesn't work. That's why we weren't set up that way, uh, as a matter of fact. And, you know, if we're not allowing the destruction of the country through illegal immigration, we're allowing it through uh, the wars that we're funding and supporting and sending weaponry all over the world. Uh, the America is about to run oh, no. out of bombs. Oh, no. Don't announce this. <laughs> Everyone knows the United States, of course, has the most powerful military in the world. Nobody else even comes close uh, to our ability to hunt down our enemies and quickly drop stuff on them <laughs> from halfway across the world. Yeah. But what if... We run out of those bombs. Uh, the Ukrainian city of Avdika is a cautionary tale. February 17th, the city fell to a Russian assault because the defenders ran low on ammunition. Oh, gosh. Although Ukrainian authorities claimed they were overseeing an orderly withdrawal, the fighters faced a harrowing ordeal. One group of soldiers fled in a beat-up car, <laughs> which limped to safety after a Russian rocket blew out a tire. French war correspondent Guillaume Patak reported, uh, troops filmed themselves passing by an iconic landmark, a sign that read, Advika is Ukraine, with Russian bombs falling around them. Uh, U.S. foreign policy debates often focus on questions of money and political willpower, whether the American taxpayer has the patience to keep supporting these adventures. Less often than they should, those debates focus on the moral and ethical limits. But what about the practical limits? Like, we only have so many bombs. I, You know, we don't produce them as fast as we did in World War II because we're not at war, supposedly. And so if we run out and we're in danger of doing that, do you know how long it would take to ramp back up and get to where we're supposed to be in order to fight a war or two if we had to? Yeah. Five years. Five years just to get our, just to replenish our stockpiles. Uh, you, he is leaving us. The commander in chief is leaving us in maybe the most vulnerable position we've ever been in as a nation. Uh, the 155 millimeter artillery shell, just a basic weapon of modern warfare, shows exactly what this problem is all about. We produce 28,000. Produced 28,000 shells in October 2023. Uh, comes out to 336,000 shells a year. In November, different European officials gave different estimates of Europe's combined production capacity. Somewhere between 400,000 and 700,000 combined in Europe. And both regions are trying. We're, we're trying. They're trying to increase our capacity. But it takes some time. The war in Ukraine is burning through those shells faster than we're making them faster than we're making them and europe is making them combined we sent more than two million rounds in a year and a half two million so if we have to fight our own war it could be just a tad problematic and this is why i don't care what you're saying about russia's aggression and what's next if Ukraine falls? We got to be worried about what's next if we're ever attacked. Well, luckily, the United States of America isn't a target for the rest of the world. Yeah, there's that. Sure. Yeah, nobody. So you need to just Nobody's chill. interested. You need to relax. <laughs> In the United States of America. Okay. Thank you for talking me down from that ledge. Keith, that's, yeah. that's a really good point. Seems a little negative over there. Yeah. You should be more positive like me. Right. Yes, you're right. Yeah, that's very true. Mm -hmm. uh, because, I mean, who'd want America? You know, what do we have to offer if you were to take us over? <laughs> I'm looking forward to talking who'd to... Who'd want us? 
Laura Logan an hour from now oh, about yeah, uh, who might want to take over America. Yeah. Uh, just I was cause knowing that the interview was coming up today. I was uh, reading up on some things that the mainstream media says about her. It's unbelievable the attacks she has endured just because she started speaking common sense. Yep. Yep. You know you're over the target when you start catching flack, right? Yep. I mean, she's getting the flack. That's for sure. Uh, they're all pissed off that she dare stray from the liberal point of view. How dare you? And I don't know that she even changed. I think she just is more vocal she's a about her view, viewpoint now. She's a great journalist. You're not allowed to be a journalist if you're in mainstream media. Such a good journalist that she was part of 60 Minutes. That's really the pinnacle of that industry. Uh, but they don't appreciate her anymore. That's, nope. for, that's for sure. Uh, all right. So we'll talk to her about what's going on there and the bridge situation in Baltimore. Interesting theory there. Yeah. She's uh, been doing some reporting and talking to people who would know. And so people we... are telling her it was on purpose. <laughs> so we'll talk to her about that in a little over an hour here. Also, this is interesting. Speaking of crime and all the things that are going on, crime in our government, the FBI is trying to rehabilitate their image. Um, and the image of them using Section 702 of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, FISA, that's the FISA Act, uh, they've been abusing it so badly they've violated the Fourth Amendment 278,000 times. Yeah. 278,000 times. Yes, sir. They violated the Fourth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. So is that a problem? Not for the Bureau, of course. They're trying to get authorization from Congress to continue to do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to... Wow. I'm going to talk to Steve Friend. He was the FBI whistleblower. He's going to be the guest on my show this week. And uh, we're going to have a conversation about this because he is no fan of the FBI either, being a former Fed himself. Uh, well, Mike Lee just wrote, the FBI just got called out on a community <laughs> note on X. Yes, yes, yes. Congress, yeah. take note. FISA 702 has been used for <laughs> warrantless surveillance of U.S. citizens hundreds of thousands of times. Yeah. Yet the FBI demands 702 be reauthorized by April 19th without a warrant requirement for searches of U.S. citizens. How about no? Mm -hmm. and, no. And that that is right there in a nutshell, just a, a, a prime example of why the left and the big government apparatus absolutely hates the fact that Elon Musk owns Twitter mm -hmm. and therefore the ability to call out these lies right. is, is is available. Whereas on Facebook or Instagram or where you hang out over on threads, for example, <laughs> uh, it, it, you don't have that pushback. Yeah. So that is the good thing about having something like community notes on Twitter. Call out government. And it's incredible how, you know, we were all lulled into a false sense of security with our government when FISA began and every seemingly, you know, people, especially on the right, were for it. But they haven't even used it against terrorism. It's usually <laughs> used against American citizens. It's used against families of, of, uh, of girls who have to put up with males in their locker rooms and bathrooms used against people speaking out about disgusting, vile books in their schools that they don't want their kids to have access to. Uh, that's that's who's being investigated now. Uh, it's despicable. They've just turned, they've weaponized the FBI against American citizens. And it's just got to stop. And I say, I say Congress not continue this fiasco. Uh, but they, I'm sure they will. Because the FBI is crying about how that's going to tie their hands if they can't do this anymore. Oh, no. So that yeah. means less house calls over your social media posts <laughs> that they don't like? Well, they just want to talk to you about that. You know, that's not so bad. Yeah. They're I'm just not... showing up and knocking on your nah. door just so we can have a little discussion. No, we're not going to have a discussion. No? No, but they can mm. talk to my attorney. Okay. Yeah. Fortunately, the people that we've seen have actually told them that. Go pound sand till my attorney gets here. How Good. about that? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's a problem. It's a problem that America is not America anymore. I mean, in so many ways, yep. just in the last half hour alone that we've talked about.
Yep. Whether and you're an illegal, right, getting mm -hmm. more benefits than a military family, mm -hmm. can't even defend ourselves because we're running out of bombs, and now we get the FBI knocking on our door. And we've got more fun to come, too. Well, it's not my concern. Pat Gray Unleashed. Got some tweets here. DMX DM tweets. Please tell me someone in the crowd below yelled, Don't jump! <laughs> when he did his addled old man run Adled toward the balcony. <laughs> yep. No, I don't know uh, that I don't anyone... think anybody did, but yeah, that would have been they... phenomenal. No, they would have... Don't jump! We need you! That's if they... No, wait, we don't need you, so whatever. Lone, Lone Wolf 2965 tweets, Oh yeah, well, if there's no such thing as oyster bunnies, who hid the shellfish all over my yard? <laughs> oh, God. What kind of neighbors you got? Uh, Trisha Twist. I noticed there was only a male and a female bunny on the balcony at the White House. Did they forget the trans bunny? Yeah. Thank you for noticing the hatred. No, the, the no, hatred. the trans bunny was there. Where? It was invisible. It was if, if mm. on Sunday we would have seen it because that's the trans day. Oh, a visibility. That's right. Okay. Uh, so we saw it the day before. Yeah. I see. See what I did? That's a long way to the well. Yeah. Uh, Jason Jasonson. <laughs> Tweets, there is zero accountability or self-awareness in the White House right now. True. Uh, Tamara B., Transgender Visibility Day. Should have been on April 1st. April Fool's Day. Only a fool thinks you can change your gender. Alan Blodgett, Dem Math. Arrest less plus enforce less equals crime down? <laughs> Surprisingly, no. It doesn't. <laughs> Frank Johnson's alter ego. Uh, so, in other words, a living wage is now $53 an hour just to afford a house. Yeah. Yeah. 110000 Is that what that adds up to? Mm -hmm. 110000 a year. Cool. All righty. Not a problem, is this it? This is American dream, baby. Yeah, American dream. Mm, here we are. Um, did you see the squatters' rights thing? We've been talking about squatters a lot lately because the problem is really crazy. It's completely out of control. There's over 1,200 that we know of in Atlanta. It's happening all over the country. Well, two alleged squatters <laughs> just showed a $25 Shake Shack receipt among several pieces of evidence they claim show that they have legal rights to live in a $930,000 New York home. Rondiel L. Francis and Lance Hunt sued Dennis Curland and Julia Fulman, the owners of the duplex uh, in Queens, after they were kicked out of the property. Then they took them to court. And showed him this Apple payment receipt for $25.27 uh, from a Shake Shack. And it was, oh, because it was delivered to the Jamaica uh, Queens address that they claim to live in. So, I mean, Shake Shack can't get it right, wrong, right? They, everything Shake Shack does, you can just take directly to the bank. Oh, okay. Well, Shake Shack delivered a meal there? Done. <laughs> done it's your home <laughs> i mean that's unbelievable that they think that's a compelling piece of evidence well it who knows man it just it, means you're there at the time that doesn't mean you own the place well i mean we we've we've seen and we've played the videos in the past where if you wrote uh, a, a candidate's name on like a little scrap of paper or like a napkin or something oh that's a vote they'll take it yeah they'll so, take it as so, your ballot yeah in, in america 2024 yeah this fits right in they have every reason to believe this will pass muster so the couple is trying to have them <laughs> evicted from the place and they just can't uh they just can't get them extracted but florida sheriff um uh, Grady Judd, we've talked about this guy before. No, no, no nonsense, just a common sense kind of guy. Uh, he said that in his county, squatters are just a bunch of dopers and freeloaders. And he warned them that if they pull their antics in his area, <laughs> they're in for a one-way ride to the county jail. He said, this is an easy problem to fix. <laughs> Uh, we never have a problem because we go to the house, we determine, well, the real owner doesn't know who these people are, and they've entered into no contract. So what we do is we load them up, give them a one-way ride to the county jail. Mm -hmm. It's just that simple. 
You don't have to bog it down in court. Just do what's right. <laughs> what an amazing quote from a sheriff, from somebody in a position of power. Thank you. That's how it should be. Figure out the situation. All right, do they belong there? No? All right, well then pull them out and take them in. It's not that hard. In other jurisdictions, police are always saying, yeah, our hands are tied. We hands are tied. nothing we could do about it. There's nothing we could do. It's got to go to the court. So we just stood there. Uh, and then we left. Oh, okay. Well, that's great. Yeah, I mean, we had another great quote from another sheriff in Florida last week. It was like, hey, if you shot this guy breaking into the home, uh, we need you to come down to the station. You're not in trouble. Uh, we just want to give you the proper training course so that the next time you can save the taxpayers some money. It's awesome. Uh, That's great. That, yeah. Uh, now, Sheriff Judd added that it's always been that way in this county. They pop smoke on us and leave whenever they get out of jail, and they're gone. I mean, they're gone fast because we don't put up with it. And that's the bottom line. Across this nation, if you get tired of it, do something about it. And by the way, in his county, uh, which is Polk County, Crime is at a 50-year low. <laughs> Seems like it, they know what they're doing there. Yeah, it's amazing what happens when you use common sense and enforce the law. It's really amazing. It, if we used that, if we used that premise and applied it to illegal immigration, we wouldn't have the Ill- illegal immigration problem. It would be mostly fixed. I mean, it's never going to be perfect, but just enforce the law we have. We don't need new laws. We've got the laws in place that can fix this problem. But they won't do it. They just won't. Uh, All right. So uh, Biden's U.S. citizenship, speaking of immigration, um, Citizenship and Immigration Service is introducing a third gender uh, gender option. Now, (laughs) the USCIS is introducing a third gender option called X, so I guess you could be male, okay. which would be the M, female F, and then X, and which then is defined as another gender identity. I mean, so oh, this good. is the U.S. Immigration Services that's doing this. Yep. Well, this will never apply to anyone because no one's going through legally the right way. Yeah. So this is kind of <laughs> if a tree falls in the forest. Today we published a new edition of Form N four hundred, the first form to include the X gender option. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this option will become available on additional forms as we revise them. Well, that's really good news, isn't it? That's so good. Thank you for doing that. Now I feel safe. I really do. I really feel like the immigration situation is taken care of now. I kind of want like an immigrant to, to <laughs> go through the process, get in line, get ready to take the oath, and then they see this and they're like, you know what? Maybe I don't want to be an American after all. <laughs> this place is nuts. Yeah, that would show some common sense and some respect on their part. And I don't think they. Uh, well, this is the people that have the... done it the right way. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's true. You know. And yeah, because now... you're actually applying for mm-hmm. something here. Uh, yesterday was a really sad day in one respect. Uh, the last remaining survivor of Pearl Harbor died mm. at 102 years old. Louis Cant- Contour. Uh, last survivor of 335 from the USS Arizona at Pearl Harbor. Uh, just died yesterday. Really sad. It's amazing that, you know, that whole generation that we respect so much and owe so much to, just almost completely gone now. Yeah, I mean, whose memory that we allow our government to trample on mm. with stories like uh, we've been reading here for the last half hour plus. Yep. Also sad is the recent battle between New York City and uh, its firefighters. Fire Department Brass ordered an East Village Ladder Company to remove its red line American flag, honoring the squad's six brothers killed on 9-11. Oh. It's uh, amazing. <laughs> A neighborhood resident complained it was fascist. <laughs> okay. And a local lefty politician questioned whether it was a politically charged symbol. (laughs) So they removed it. Yeah, initially. uh, 
The shocking order came March 22nd after a man claiming he was a staffer for Democratic Manhattan Councilwoman Carlina Rivera confronted firefighters at Ladder Company 11. The man pedaled up to the East 2nd Street Firehouse firehouse on a bike. Pedaled up. uh, (laughs) On a bicycle and told firefighters he worked for Rivera and that the councilwoman's office complained to the FDNY three days earlier about the flag, which features a red stripe in tribute of fires, uh, firefighters injured or killed in the line of duty. Right. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you can't even do that now. Can't even, you can't even honor the first responders who died in 9-11 without being called a fascist. <laughs> he called it a fascist symbol, demanded to know why it's still up. In a March 19th email... Uh, to FDNY, Intergovernmental Affairs Coordinator Madison Hernandez, Rivera staffer Lysander Rosario said the councilwoman's office was contacted at the constituent by the constituent twice about the latter company's flag and asked if it's violating department rules. <laughs> I can't make this stuff up. They claimed uh, it was to honor deceased firefighters. However, the constituent brought up the fact that they could have used an FDNY flag rather than a politically charged symbol. Politically charged? Okay. How is the American flag with that red stripe politically charged in any way? If you can't handle it, don't look at it! Hours after the constituent left the firehouse, uh, Deputy Chief Joseph Shirali visited firefighters there and reluctantly said the flag must come off the truck mm-hmm. because it violated department prohibition of altered versions of the American flag. Okay, thank FDR for that one. The rule was implemented in 2020 by the then commissioner, mm. Daniel Negro, uh, and then first deputy commissioner, Laura Kavanaugh, during the height of the anti-cop Black Lives Matter protests. Aha, now we're getting somewhere. Yep. The order sparked immediate outrage on social media with conservative Instagram influencer Rogan O'Hanley posting a photo of the flag and saying New York firefighters were forced to take down a memorial to those who died on 9-11. What has happened to New York City? Mm -hmm. Hours later, now Commissioner Kavanaugh and the Chief of Department John Hodgins reversed the decision and allowed the flag back on the truck. And how ridiculous Thank that it goodness. took this much of a process. I know. God. It should have just been the firefighters saying, no, and we're done here. Yeah. If you don't like it, don't look at it and move on and move on. <laughs> how about, you know, if you don't like it so badly, we won't show up at your house <laughs> when it's on fire. Uh, how about that? Would that? you like that? Would that please you so you don't have to see that symbol of hate? <laughs> uh, all right, let me take a minute and uh, tell you about preborn. Abortion's been the greatest sin in our, in our history uh, as a country, and it happens every single day. And unfortunately, overturning Roe versus Wade was only the first step in a long list of steps toward eventually cleansing our country of that horrific stain on its conscience. The Ministry of Preborn empowers young expectant mothers in crisis to choose life. Preborn has rescued hundreds of thousands of babies' lives through ultrasounds. When a woman considering abortion visits a preborn center, she gets to hear her baby's heartbeat and meet that precious child through the ultrasound. And it's just a divine encounter that changes their lives. The majority of the time, she'll choose life for her baby. That's why we're proud to be affiliated with an organization that's not only working to save lives, but is succeeding at doing it. Just $28 saves a baby's life. $28. Can you afford that? If not, a dollar would be helpful. Over the past years, preborn centers have counseled over 450,000 women considering abortion, and over 200,000 babies have been saved. Amazing statistics. But we've got to do more. If you can help us rescue a baby, please dial town, pound 250. Say the keyword baby. That's pound 250. Keyword baby. Or go to preborn.com. Slash pound. Beware. Pat Gray is unleashed. So really, that... that uh 
FDNY story with the flag. Uh, hey, yep. you got to take this flag down. It offends me. We actually have a video uh, explaining the difference between the liberals and conservatives. Uh, this guy out on his fishing boat. <laughs> we have clip 14. I mean, this really sums it up beautifully here if you want to right. play that. If a conservative doesn't like a gun, they just don't buy it. If a liberal doesn't like guns, they want to outlaw them for everyone. If a conservative is a vegan, they don't eat meat. If a liberal is a vegetarian or vegan, they want to ban meat products for everyone. <laughs> I found if a conservative is gay, they live their life and respect other people's choices. If a liberal is gay, they demand respect, even if it has to be legislated. Mm -hmm. If a conservative is down and out on their situation, they think about how can I improve? How can I better where I'm at? I'm right. misty. Mm -hmm. If a liberal is down and out, mm -hmm. they want someone to take care of them. It's everybody else's fault. If a conservative uh -huh. doesn't like a talk show, a TikTok, mm -hmm. they simply switch channels or swipe up. A liberal, they're going to demand that that video be removed, that that talk show be canceled. Right. If a conservative is a non-believer, they simply don't go to church. <laughs> if a liberal is a non-believer, they think all religion should be removed from every facet of life. If a conservative <laughs> believes he needs health care, he goes shopping for it or finds a job that will provide it. Right. A liberal... They're demanding that the rest of us pay for their health care. Mm. It should be universal. A conservative, he realizes that they're responsible for their emotions, their responses, their actions, their triggers. A liberal, they want to blame their triggers, their issues, their misfortunes on everyone else. They never take responsibility. If a conservative watches this, he's going to forward it to a few of his friends for a laugh. A liberal? is going to try to get it deleted, taken down, because they're offended, they're mm -hmm. triggered. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to be canceled. I, think that's... <laughs> I, I also think uh, oh, man. you're not going to catch that's something great. if you cast your line and immediately pull it back in just because it's a prop <laughs> for your video, bro. I mean, let it sit he there for a He wanted to be bit. really super casual right? and fish while he's delivering this... <laughs> The soliloquy. Got, I mean, if we, you just let it sit there, let uh -huh. let it do its job, and then. So, I like what he said, though. Uh huh. Oh, absolutely. 100%. Good stuff. Yep. Completely true. We just want to be left. One hundred. Yep. Just leave us alone. Leave us alone. One hundred, right there. Wait, what? You Done. can't do the racist thing, oh, man. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's right. <sighs> if I say percent, one hundred percent, is it boomer. still racist or is it? Oh, boomer, that makes it boomer. Boomer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> More coming up in just a minute. Oh, don't forget, we got Laura Logan coming up in about half an hour. Pat Gray Unleashed. Pat Gray is here on yeah. the Blaze Radio Network. And welcome to it. Thanks for joining us few tweets here. James Miller tweets, instead of MAGA, Trump's slogan should be, Ma, make America, America again. Okay. All right. I can do it. M triple A. Ma. Okay. Yeah. I like it. Uh, Sons of Th Thunder 43, Illness and Plagues. Uh, there's a book that warned about these signs. Really? Huh. Weird. Huh. That is interesting. Uh, Fury and energy. Weird. I wonder what's causing the low birth rates among new naturalized citizens of Western nations. <laughs> <laughs> Holy smoke, 1776. This is what happens when people go along to get along. Right-leaning people just want to be left alone and go on with their lives. The other side plays for keeps and never budges. Wake up, America. Yep. Uh, Hee-haw, the Viking. Never, uh, never let your locality try to transition from a sheriff's department to a PD. Sheriffs are our best protection from an overreaching government. Remember, they have the authority to deputize an entire county. Oh, I like this. Yeah, Good thinking, great. man. Seriously. Great stuff. Uh, coming up in about half an hour, we're going to be speaking to Laura uh, Laura Logan, 
And uh, the main thing that we wanted to touch on was the bridge situation, the key bridge in Baltimore. Uh, she's gotten information from people that maybe that was done on purpose. I mean, there are certainly some weird things about it, some suspicious things. Uh, it's interesting, though, that that the mainstream media really doesn't like her anymore. Now, she was one of their own for a long time. Uh, ascended to 60 Minutes, was like CBS's lead reporter. Um, but then she started speaking out. Uh, and... I was reading this New York Times article yesterday. They started with a par- paragraph or so about how respected she was. When, to them, she told the line. But listen to this. But today, Ms. Logan cuts a far different figure in American media. Instead of on national news broadcasts, she can be found as a guest on right-wing podcasts. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or speaking at a rally for fringe causes, promoting falsehoods about deaths from COVID vaccines and conspiracy theories about voter fraud. Really? Is that what Nobody's ever died from the COVID vaccine. And uh, there's never been any voter fraud, right? Is that what we're supposed to believe, New York Times? Recent, get this, recently, she downplayed the seriousness of the January 6th assault on the Capitol on one of those shows. Oh, no, no. Did she maybe not call it an insurrection or the day democracy almost died? Because we can't have that. We can't have that. Here's what she, they quote her as saying. This is now the crime of the century. She asked sarcastically. <laughs> Well, that's what you should be asking, because it's crazy what they've made out of January 6th. She has echoed pro-Kremlin attacks on the United States. Really? Accusing Americans of arming the Nazis of Ukraine. And, get this, how dare you compare Dr. Anthony S. Fauci and Hillary Clinton to some of Hitler's most notorious henchmen. Oh, 100%. 100. 100, 100. right there. Yeah. Oh, 100. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, But of course, you know, the New York Times will claim that's all crazy conspiracy stuff. And it's not. It's just not. If they could look beyond the nose on their face, they might discover some things at the New York Times. It'd be interesting to see them do that. Uh, We had a lefty poll, a lefty that posted a poll on Twitter the other day. Yeah, I stumbled upon this. This is fun. Mm -hmm. It's a question for Americans. Which of these years, in your opinion has had the most terrible impact on your country. Okay? Was it 2000? Bush versus Gore. (laughs) Uh, 2008, the economic crisis. Okay. Uh, The 2016 election of Trump. Okay. Or the 2000 COVID-19 pandemic. Hmm. And so, uh, which was it? For which do you think overwhelmingly won? (laughs) Uh, Of course, it was Donald Trump. By 73 (laughs) percent. The most terrible impact on your country. 73 percent over the 2000. And second was the Bush Gore result. (laughs) Come on. COVID was 4 percent. Gosh. And the economic crisis, only 1 percent. They didn't even mention 9-11. 9-11? I I noticed that too. Mm -hmm. Uh, Let's just conveniently leave that. I'll bet you Trump still would have won. In that stupid oh my poll. gosh! I, I bet would he still would have seen that poll. Yeah, oh, just outrageous. Ow. That's why. How do we get back together in this country? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. When you've got people this uh, polarized, mm-hmm. is there any coming back together? That's why people are worried about the movie uh, Civil War because it shows that well, we go to civil war over some of our differences. I guess they don't really explain what the differences are. That's what I've heard. That uh, we never find out exactly what touched all of these events off. Mm. And we I don't think they ever explain how Texas and California get together. Okay. And when's that coming out? That's real soon. Yeah, it's pretty soon. Mm-hmm. April sometime? Yeah, it's this month. Maybe in a couple of weeks. Uh, and this is neat. Disney Plus has a new cartoon. Oh, cool. We need some new content. I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, and it's Disney, so you know it's going to be good. Am I right? (laughs) Who's with me on that? Uh, Check this out. Is it Ariel? Ariel. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. 
Ariel, where are you? Yahoo! Jumping crawfish. Are you okay? I'm Finn. There she is. She's fantastic. Coming this summer. <laughs> Hi, Atlantica! My tail can shimmer in all different ways. I call that one the happy shimmer. Tanti Ursula! Welcome <laughs> to Ursula's Magic Camp! Oh? Oh. <laughs> Disney Junior presents Everybody is different in Atlantica. And that's the best part! A brand new series. You are a very special mermaid. <laughs> Like it? That's my Ariel. Do you like this? Mm -hmm. Ariel. Coming this summer to Disney Junior. And, oh, Disney Junior. Ju oh, Disney okay. Junior. Yeah. I gotta check and make sure I have that because that's mm -hmm. must see TV. <laughs> Isn't it though? Excited? Oh, yeah. Can't we got. Wait. Uh, can't wait. We got the black Ariel. Right. Okay. With all of her friends. Um, everybody's different in Atlantica. And that's what and makes, that's that's what makes it so special, yeah. Keith. That's what makes it so special. Yeah, that's yeah. what makes it so DEI. It's D -E so great. Mm -hmm. The diversity, the equity, the inclusion. That's what we're looking for in a Disney cartoon. Sure. <clears throat> Otherwise, life isn't worth living. Wow. All right. If you if you just had a regular Ariel like we saw before, that would be wrong. It'd be wrong. I uh, I think the biggest uh, thing about that whole uh, preview. Ursula's nice now. What the hell's that? Yeah, I know. That's what I noticed kids? too. Yeah, that's bizarre. Uh, no, <laughs> I mean it, that. I, I think I'm nobody more offended can be by mean. That. Yeah, no one. Uh, no one. It's like everything's gray now. See, there's no good and bad. It's just she's in the live action movie. I think they made Ariel gray and uh, black in that one too, right? Yeah. So th they're gonna continue. But that did they make her now. nice? That's the issue here that I have with. With Ursula. Oh, you said Ariel. Yeah. Ariel's like, Ariel yeah, was yeah, black uh -huh. in, in that. But she so gets to keep the, keep the red going. hair, which seems very uh, yeah. cu cultural appropriation there. It, it, right. It does seem like that. Huh. I guess that's okay, though, because you're appropriating from mm -hmm. w normally white people, I guess, would have red hair. I don't know. So. And then, yeah, Ursula being nice. Yeah, that's what's really that's great. Just stuck in McCraw. <laughs> Come on. Ursula's Weird. not. No, she's not nice. Mm. You you gotta have you can't have any sort of dichotomy there. I guess not. I guess not. Everything's got to be happy. Yeah, and everybody's happy. Cool. Every, everything's fine. Okay. Well, when it's DEI, it's got to be great. Everything's perfect. Oh my gosh! I call. We're a, in utopia now. I called a company yesterday. Mm -hmm. I was on hold for way too long, and since I'm impatient, it was probably sixty <laughs> seconds. But no, mm -hmm. I was on long enough to hear uh, at least three times. This uh, the just recycling of, of commercials, you know, and the on hold music. And mm -hmm. it was like, we're an ESG company, oh, blah, man. blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I oh, can't, man. this call can't end fast enough. Uh, agonizing. Yep. They're even doing that on the hold mm -hmm. presentation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good. All right, good. Yeah. And it was, I, I hesitate to say, I'm not going to say the name of the company because I'm not doing business with them. I just had to call them about for someone else. But it was it was a car warranty company. Really? So Okay. We've been trying to contact you about your extended warranty. Uh, please call our ESG company. Mm. Anyway, it's just this world wow. is insane. Yeah, it is. It is. To the point where Mexico is now demanding $20 billion from us uh, so that they can help us secure our border. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Trump claims that the president of Mexico, Obrador, lacks respect for Biden because he asked for $20 billion simply to talk as part of a series of outlandish requests. Wow. Just think of that. Diplomatic blackmail. Yes. Yeah. I do not yeah. like the cut of Obrador's jib. Oh, I, no. Mm -mm. I don't know what that means, but I don't either. I just don't like him. I don't. Just looking at it. Cut of his jib is like completely it. off. Hmm? Anytime he has a jib that's cut that way, I'm I'm not with it. I'm not down with it at all. <laughs> you should do something about your jib. Yeah, you know what I mean for sure. Yeah, you that's don't... a bad jib, and I'll tell him so to his face. You've got a bad jib, my friend. <laughs> uh, anyway, Trump said he said he wants ten billion dollars, essentially just to talk. Ten billion to talk. That wouldn't happen with me with the wall. Earlier this year, Obrador <laughs> suggested that the Mexican government would work to support U.S. efforts to curb the surge of illegal immigrants, but only if certain outlandish conditions were met. 
He wants us to reciprocate by sending $20 billion a year in taxpayer money in the form of aid to Latin America and the Caribbean to address so-called root causes oh, of go. migration. So we need to fix their country, not them. The fact- this is so unbelievable. In fact, he would even ask that. Shows yeah, you it, where we're at. It's... Uh, I mean, you can't... Fix your own country! Fix it yourself! It's not our fault that you're <laughs> squandering away your taxpayer dollars, that your country is in ruins right now and everybody wants to come here. We didn't do that. We're not going to shut down our border until you change your policy on Cuba and change your policy on Venezuela. Uh, that's what Brian Kilmeade reminded viewers Obrador is essentially saying. Is it okay for the Mexican president to dictate American policy? And of course the answer is no. Uh, so this was during an interview with Brian Kilmeade yesterday that Trump was saying these things. Aside from the $20 billion in aid, Obrador also wants to see Biden lift sanctions on communist Cuba and Venezuela's social government, socialist government, and the granting amnesty and providing legal status to millions of law-abiding Mexicans living in the U.S. So, he's demanding that we just wave our magic wand and grant them amnesty and grant them legal status. Make them citizens, essentially. (laughs) Jeez. That is incredible. Hmm. Uh, Obrador has explained such ideas as him speaking frankly because we have to say things as they are, and I always say what I feel. (laughs) I'm sure you do. House Speaker Mike Johnson recently said that if the U.S., that the U.S. could even force Mexico to comply with American immigration policy, but the comments only serve to irk Obrador further. We're not a colony. We're not a protectorate of any foreign country. However, we do want your money. Um, And we have a very good relationship with the government of the United States, but not one of subordination. (laughs) All right. You think this is happening under Trump? No. Not a chance. Not, Not a chance in hell. It is absolutely not happening under Trump. And, you know, it's just one of the many reasons Joe Biden cannot cannot be reelected. Uh, so hopefully, you know, we'll do the right thing as Americans. <laughs> hopefully. Come November, it'll be all right. Come November, uh, I'll be holding that no. ballot tight. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, Ooh, not you. Know I will not going. be holding you tight. A little concern there. Uh, just like it was back during the pandemic... Uh, Today, we're facing drug and medical supply shortages here in the United States. As of March, there were more than 200 drug shortages here. And it's looking like it's going to get a whole lot worse before it gets any better. Healthcare experts have pointed to shortages in uh, domestic production and the Drug Supply Chain Security Act as trends to watch during the course of this year. You wouldn't think that things like this could happen in America, but we've been seeing it. Now, literally for years, this is why you should have a Jace case. It provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use. All you have to do is fill out a simple form online, and you'll have it there, ready in case you need it. This little case, it comes with five different antibiotics, and you can do add-ons too. Um, EpiPens, Ivermectin, all kinds of things. Jace Medical, they're empowering people just like you to be able to take your family's health into your own hands. Check it out today. Go to jacemedical.com, enter the promo code PAT at checkout, and you'll get a discount on your order. That's promo code PAT at J-A-S-E, jacemedical.com. Pat Gray Unleashed. We'll be right back after this. Welcome, triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Pat unleashed on Twitter. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, it's your kind of music, right? You getting that vibe? Yeah, old oh man. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you like. Any, I'm all see, about that, it. That, 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 that's all kind of a it. rule of thumb in music. Any song <laughs> with a harmonica 
pad is all, all, all over, over it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The only thing I like better is probably an accordion. Okay. If you have all right, get so, an accordion in it. All right. So, uh, man, then I am down with that. I, I don't know if it's possible. Fury and Energy, the guy who supplies uh, Cheffy with his uh, new Chewing the Fat uh, theme, you know, uh, songs. Mm-hmm. But maybe you could tell AI to uh, oh, uh, a, rustle us up a, or a harmonica and harmonica. accordion yeah. song so we can right. make this happen. Sure. <clears throat> for Be Pat. great. For, for Pat. You know what? Speaking of Jeffy, I forgot that I was going to bring in a box of cookies for you guys today before <laughs> Jeffy got here. So there'd be some for you. I forgot. <laughs> Left them in the fridge. Dang it. Oh. Dang, dang, dang. <laughs> Comes Let with me the, eat. This new box comes with the uh, two new flavors, too. The chocolate coconut okay. and key lime pie. I'm excited about that key lime pie. I looked at it last night on the website because I got the email. Well, you're a Texan, man. Oh. Texans love their key lime. I will fight you uh. for the key. You better bring multiple key limes unless you Hopefully want there entertainment will be. in here. I'll make sure that happens. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll try to. I well, you, uh, coconut, I'm excited about the coconut. But the key lime pie. I like coconut, but yeah, I've heard it's really, oh. really good. It looks delicious. Plus, we're doing a promotion every week this month at Kexi.com, K-E-K-S-I.com. Uh, so check back on Monday each week to see what the new promo is. Oh. But this week, we're promoting uh, the winner of our Munch Madness bracket. I'm upset. Mine didn't win. Uh, what, was what was yours? Munch Madness. Uh, what was yours? The chocolate. The, um, the sheet cake? The Texas sheet cake one? No. no? It was the birthday chocolate, I think it was. Oh. Yeah. This was the s'mores one at all. Uh, that's the s'mores cookie. Dumb. Cool. Whoever voted for that is dumb. Whoa. <laughs> it beat raspberry lemonade. I know. Butter beer. Yeah. All wow. kinds I was of surprised flavors. that butterbeer did not make it further than I thought it would. Really? Yeah. I think we were all heart, heartbroken by that. I think we were all heartbroken. The Harry wow. Potter fans I did could not barely, come through. Yeah, I could barely continue. What? My life. I'm yeah, not, I'm I, not sensing. It took me four days to get out of that Wow. Funk. <laughs> So you guys had a... Why didn't Butterbeer make it at least to the semifinals? You guys... Ah, I was pissed. Had a bracket or something over there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. fun. Yeah. We oh, did I a cookie bracket. I would have totally gone with the s'mores. So I would Oh, okay. So yeah. you're... Yeah, you're, I love that. Your guy won. Yeah. So, so congratulations on that. And then, of course, we have the president's bracket. Worst presidents of all oh, time. Oh, I meant to mention that, too. Yeah, I got it right here. You got the final four right? now. I got the final four. Uh, today and tomorrow, Woodrow Wilson battling Joe Biden. Oh, this is happening today? Yeah, well, and the tomorrow. Next, yeah, the next two days, you can okay. vote on the Wilson versus Biden. And then on Thursday and Friday, it's Obama versus Lyndon Johnson. And so the two oh. winners, uh, then will they'll meet meet in the championship game this weekend. But right now, I believe Biden's in the lead over Wilson. Right? Yeah, it's sixty three thirty seven. Biden over Wilson. Three thirty seven. Joe Biden leading. Mm-hmm. Woodrow Wilson. Worst presidents of all time. And it's. A- I'm really fascinated to see. I think Biden will win that because we're all you know suffering and through sucks. Biden right now, and he sucks and badly. He sucks. Yeah. Uh, oh, Biden, LBJ, that's a tough one for me. Mm-hmm. That's a tough one. Right. I might actually go LBJ because well, he's been, he was so disastrous. I know you. continues to cost us trillions a year. And I know you spend a lot of time on Twitter X. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And man. so you can oh. vote uh, at the top. It's pinned every day to the top of my page at Keith Malinak. And we'll know uh, Monday who the worst president of all time is. As decided by you. There's been no upsets yet. These are all one seeds that made it to the final four. No so, upsets. Yeah. So, but it would be a fairly mild upset if Wilson beat Biden, right? Uh, Isn't I don't know. Biden the overall number one yeah, seed? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. So yeah. Biden is the number one. It'd be a mild upset. Selection committee has said that. <laughs> all sure. right. We've got uh, Lara Logan coming up in just a few minutes. Uh, can't wait to talk to her about that uh, Baltimore bridge collapse and multiple other things. Like how. How she's being treated now mm-hmm. by CBS and others. You know, her firm, former employer, her former co workers. It's despicable how, if you don't, if you're not in lockstep with them every moment of every day, they're coming for you. Uh, they, these are just despicable people. So, uh, as we prepare for her, I thought we might uh, uh, check out this list of. Wait, we're doing a list on the main yeah, show? Yeah, we're doing a list right now. Oh, this is normally reserved for overtime. Yes. Oh, wow. But the 15 most annoying millennial phrases. Oh, crap. That have worn out their welcome. You're <laughs> a millennial, right, Chris? I am a millennial. I feel targeted. Okay. Hardcore. I, I don't know if I'd qualify this as simply a millennial phrase because my 
program director, you know this, Keith. Mm. Uh, our program director in Houston said this all the time. Dude, it just is what it is. Ah, it's right there on the wall, too. Yeah. It just is what it is. <laughs> That's a, <laughs> How is that associated with millennials? That's been around I for a long don't time. No. It is what it is. It, I've always hated that expression because, of course, it is what it is. Duh. It's not gonna. It isn't what it isn't. What else would it be? It is what it isn't. No, it's not gonna be that. <laughs> or it isn't what it is. No, it <laughs> has to be. It is what it is. So you've really said nothing. Said nothing. Uh, this this one I have noticed, and you know Reese uses it all the time. Sorry, not sorry. Oh, that's mm-hmm. a good one. All right, that one needs to go away. Is that Beyonce that started that? How about this? I think we use this on the show from time to time. Hmm? I can't even. I can't. You get so frustrated, and there's nothing else you can say. I, I can't even. I don't even get to the even. I just like I, I can't, can't. I can't. Yes, we, that does happen every day on this show. Adulting. Oh. This term has become a colloquial way uh, to describe performing everyday adult responsibilities, like paying bills or going to work. Adulting sucks. You're, you're adulting. <laughs> okay. Uh, then we have this is everything. Not terribly familiar with that phrase. Are you, Chris? Do you hear that yeah. uh, from you and your friends <laughs> yeah. on a regular basis? Yeah, this is everything. Yeah. This is everything. Uh, how about literally? <laughs> the word literally. <laughs> People use that all the time when they don't mean literally. Wait a minute. I, I My see wife this beat me is. out of that one. So oh, I really? Say it, yeah. yeah. Okay. How about actually? That's got to be on there somewhere. I don't know if it is. Let's okay. see. Uh I'm dead, dying. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yep. I like that one. Okay. Uh, no worries. Hear that all the time. No worries. No problem. No problem is what I use. No worries is like a, I don't know, that's Australian to me. Yas. Yas, queen. For for uh, yes. Okay. Yes. I guess. An enthusiastic, drawn-out way of saying yes, often used to show strong agreement or approval. Yas. Yas, queen. <laughs> slay. Oh, it's slay, yeah. Slay. It's up there with kill me. Uh, I can't adult today. Oh. Okay, that sounds like a Every morning thing. when I wake up. Goals. Shook. <laughs> and let's see. FOMO. Oh. Fear of missing out. Yeah. Okay. Living my best life. This is Pat Gray. Unleashed. Great to have you with us. 888-900-3393. Really excited and uh, honored to have Laura Logan join us this morning here on The Blaze. Laura, welcome. Thanks for coming on. Thank you so much. Thank Uh, you for having me. We've been following uh, your work for for a really long time and uh, appreciate everything you do. Um, You know, last week after the bridge collapsed, uh, the key bridge in Baltimore collapsed, one of the first things we noticed was that you uh, tweeted out on X, or X'd out on on Twitter, whatever it is, um, that that was maybe done on purpose, that intelligence sources were telling you that something nefarious, nefarious happened there, which is interesting because as soon as it came down, the authorities were claiming there was no evidence of anything, of any kind of wrongdoing at all. Yes, which was odd, right, because they hadn't had time to investigate <laughs> So for the authorities to make a definitive statement um, about anything was unusual, um, especially when you look at um, the nature of what happened. And when I was talking to people, some of whom had worked in Baltimore for 30 years, you know, and had worked in um, maritime terror attacks and, you know, a number of other areas where they, they had direct knowledge and expertise Mm -hmm. um others that work in critical infrastructure and um for the the government who are still you know on active duty so it was it was odd because i wasn't trying to contradict the official narrative it didn't you know the the people that i was in touch with were so um knowledgeable and um accurate and in a position to know um, some of them still, you know, on active duty um, in the intelligence community. And I know that that's what they were reporting. Um, and so it was just very strange to me. Yeah, very. Tell us uh, about some of the peculiar things that happened that led these people to believe that it was done on purpose. 
Okay, so, I mean, a lot of people, you know, including myself before I really embarked on this process, don't know a lot about the maritime, you know, shipping industry or about hazardous materials or any of those things, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, because um, uh, there were a lot of people online who were dismissing this and underplaying it and acting as if the Port of Baltimore isn't that significant and this is just a small thing and it's not much. So that was the first major, major Mm -hmm. red flag because... I mean, that is the second busiest hazardous materials corridor for the United States of America. It's the most important strategic corridor for the eastern seaboard. It's where, you know, when you talk about hazardous materials, you're talking about refined fuel and diesel and propane gas and oversized loads, chemicals. I mean, um, flammable materials. This is the engine of the economy. Right. Not only that, but it's critical to the city of Baltimore. It's where twelve dollars for every hundred dollars that comes into that city's economy comes from that port. Mm-hmm. It's also if you look at it, it's not just the corridor that it's the I-95 corridor. Right. That's along the um, that's on the road. But it's also the, the shipping corridor that runs underneath. And um, and this port is critical. I mean, a port is like an airport. You may have ships that come from further away. They take longer to get there. But their slots are, I mean, this is like done like clockwork. And so when you have a disaster on the scale of that uh, bridge, which is collapsing, which is, you know, it wasn't just that the bridge was collapsing in one part. 50% of the span of that bridge went into the water, right? That is fatal to the uh, structural integrity of the bridge. You can ask any, you know, structural engineer and they will tell you that. And there's only two anchor points on that bridge that you had to hit in order for that to happen. And those are the, the, the two sort of the pylons or the piers, you know, de- um, uh, that are on either end. They're basically those huge columns that are closest to the shore on either end that are stronger and thicker and deeper than anything else. And, you know, I did speak to some people who had been present on that bridge when it was opened in the 1970s. You know, um, one person who was in, uh, let's just say Baltimore, I'm going to keep it very vague on purpose to protect people's identity for their um, own security, especially given that it's um, that what they're reporting, you know, and what they know happened runs counter to the official narrative. And so, um, you know, what, what they knew instantly when they saw this, one, you know, one person in particular, he knew instantly that from the very first moment that he saw that ship, he knew it wasn't inside the channel, yeah. which is where it has to be when it's on course. And for, you know, multiple intelligence professionals, some of um, them still dealing directly with this attack, they knew the moment they saw it that there was a technique that, that we are very familiar with because, you know, we carry out this technique on foreign battlefields. And it's called spoofing, where you spoof the GPS signal that is on that ship. It doesn't matter how old that ship is. Everything that we do today has a digital system that is put over the analog systems. I mean, that's running this kind of equipment. And so what happens is that the harbor pilot, because when a, when a ship goes into a port, it is governed by maritime law. I mean, all of this is set in stone under maritime law. Mm-hmm. So because it, there are, you know, unique maneuvers that have to happen inside of a harbor that are, that are difficult, you need to know that, that harbor that port very well right so the harbor pilot will take over and that happens at mm. a certain official line it's not a simple process the harbor pilot boards the ship he goes up to where the captain is but this transfer of uh, power really in a sense of responsibility happens between the captain and the harbor pilot they have to state certain words that are written and mandated by maritime law that official handover takes over the harbor pilot is the one that then deals with the ship when it's in port. It then um, offloads everything, all of its hazardous materials, cargo. Then it will reload because, you know, this is how the system works mm-hmm. in the shipping industry. And then at a certain point when it crosses that official line once again, mm-hmm. then, tra- you know, power sort of responsibility for running the ship mm-hmm. transfers back to the ship's captain. So all of this happens, you know, like clockwork, right? There's no, um, there's no sort of wiggle room here because this is mandated by maritime law and um and when you see that ship that you know from the very beginning of that long video it is already not in the channel so at that point mm. the speed of the water the weight of the ship all of these things are dictated by physics 
And what is happening is that the harbor pilot or whoever is in charge of that ship at that point is seeing one thing that is on the course that's on the GPS because that signal has been overpowered and taken control of by some ex, someone externally. And yet what the crew is looking at doesn't match what they're seeing on the GPS. And now when you do this in the middle of the night, you do it because mm. the, the crew is looking at, in front and they're like, wait a minute, we're, this doesn't look right. But then they're looking at the GPS and they're like, but we're on course. But what you see with your eyes is telling you, no, you're not on course. And so by the time you're throwing off the anchor or doing whatever you can to try and correct, it's simply too late. Physics dictates that you will never be able to make the turn. And that is what everyone who knows that mm. port and who knows um, and who knows that channel and who knows how cyber attacks are carried out. It's what all of them were saying. In the very first moment, they knew instantly this couldn't be anything but a cyber attack. Right. So, hey, L Lara, this is Keith Malinak. Uh, I, I have a couple questions for you here. <laughs> have we sure. heard publicly from either the captain um, or the um, <laughs> harbor pilot? Uh, I, I've heard that there's two minutes of uh, data missing from the black box. Any of that that, that we're getting uh, uh, more information on a week out? So that's very interesting that you point that out because a number of people in the intelligence community um, pointed that out to me as well as a sign that the absence of normal is abnormal, right? Because mm -hmm. ordinarily, if you think of other things in the past where there's been, you know, colossal accidents like the deep rig, you know, horizon, right? That oil rig that happened or other things that have happened with the Maersk, Alabama. I mean, it is customary for the ship's captain and other people that are involved that are eye, first-hand eyewitnesses for them to have been interviewed in the media and to give their first-hand account of what happened. But to my knowledge, and I have not been you know, following other people's reporting on this minute by minute, so it's possible something else happened, but there certainly has not been widespread um, interviews, if any interviews, with any of these people. <laughs> Interesting. Wow. Because normally you would expect that th that, that would be a large mm. part of the story uh, mm -hmm. a week in. You would think. But no. no. That, that's very astute. That is a very astute observation. And it's one that within the first 24 hours, 48 hours, right. you know, and so on, mm -hmm. the people in the community were saying to me, look, look at all the signs. Yeah. It, look at all the signs that even, this is not a normal event. Yeah, even if it's just a, a reporter doing a stand-up in the harbor that would say, yeah, and, and we uh, heard from the uh, boat's captain that blah, blah, blah was acting weird. Nothing like that. So, so I guess uh, I, I know overnight you tweeted out um, that uh, uh, in the wake of the BLM riots and the defund the police movement, Baltimore axed a very uh, specific unit of its police force. Do you want to tell us about that? Yes. I mean, obviously, when you write something up, you know, you lose sort of more formal language. But I can tell you that the people I spoke to were like, can you believe that the most important port for the eastern seaboard <laughs> has no marine unit anymore. Wow. They have no divers of their own. Oh my that gosh. Can look under the water. They have Baltimore no has no divers of their, of their own. own, no unit of their own anymore? No police presence. Oh my gosh. They have to rely on the Coast Guard. <laughs> oh, that's, that's who crazy. they rely on. Wow. That yes, and that's crazy. why that, you know that's why you saw the Coast Guard immediately <laughs> being referenced when this happened because it's the Coast Guard that they have to turn on. So you took basically a wow. unit that had very experienced divers, yeah. you know, and, and diving, of course, is a skill, right? I mean, it, this is something that this is not experience that is acquired easily. This is not like sort of every sheriff's department or every traffic cop in America mm -hmm. where, you know, it doesn't take very long to get on-the-job experience, right? This is much more um Detailed. This is, and you had very experienced decades of marine uh, knowledge, you know, and and um, boats that were specially equipped. And I mean, this was a very important unit. It was used all the time. Everything from people who were drunk on the water falling in, <laughs> right, to um, to much more serious things during floods and and massive weather events and you know, um, advanced search and rescue under the water. I mean, uh, I'm a diver. Right. I've been a diver um, since I was very, very young. So I have limited experience of what they're dealing with. But these guys are on a whole nother level. So they just basically dumped them. 
they dumped that unit. I mean, go back wow. to 2020. This was this was documented. This is not, you know, they love to say this is conspiracy when it doesn't fit the right. narrative, right? Y- yep. And then what? Yeah, they use this these information warfare tactics where they will they will spend hours discussing on social media and they'll bring out they'll roll out the usual suspects. There'll be people that write stories about the same old narrative. You know that Lara Logan used to be this amazing reporter when when she was basically winning every award in journalism at 60 Minutes and CBS News, and she was, you know, mm-hmm. and, and we were all uh, looking to her reporting, right, as an industry. <laughs> yes, and we were we were putting her on the front page of magazines and writing up glowing profiles in the New York Times and Washington Post. Well, they love to say <laughs> they want you to believe that I do something different now. Yes. that I don't do what I always do. In mm-hmm. fact, the only thing I don't do that I always did is that I put a little more credibility and faith into the official statements of our agencies and our mm. government, because at that time, I really didn't understand the extent to which people are willing to lie mm-hmm. to, to create <laughs> and support a false narrative, nor did I think that my colleagues would be so spineless for <laughs> uh, a large part, not all of them. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, look at, look at Steve uh, Baker, your own uh, reporter from The Blaze. I can't right. say strongly enough. Yep. You know, that for our colleagues to be silent when they go after a journalist for doing his job and they're quite mm-hmm. happy for him to be thrown in jail. I mean, that is absolutely staggeringly shameful. So I don't care what they write, but the tactics are interesting because if you look yes. at it, there's a tactic called dilution, right? Where I'm reporting what I know to be accurate and true based on the experts. I'm not the expert. This is based on people who are experts, you know, in maritime attacks and shipping and the oil industry and, right. and um, cyber attacks. And so when I put that out, what you'll see them do is they dilute the, the truth, right? By throwing in People are throwing in stuff about explosions and all this other nonsense, right? Mm -hmm. They're desperately hoping that someone like me is going to pick up on something that's been put out there and that I'm going to retweet it because that gives them a chance to attack me for that and without ever addressing the substance of what I'm actually reporting. And then as well, what they do is, you know, one in one uh, interview, I, I misspoke. I said I-95 a number of times, and once I said I-94 by mistake. So they picked <laughs> up on that. They put that out there as if, you know, as if you don't know anything, you don't know the difference. Right. And what they do is they're trying to create self-doubt. So not mm-hmm. only are they trying to discredit you with mm-hmm. the audience, but they want you to doubt yourself. You know why that's so important? Because self-doubt is the kind of thing that propagates into the future. It makes you doubt yourself, not just on this story, Mm -hmm. but on everything that you do moving forward. First and foremost, on cyber attacks, you know, well, I'm not going to speak up because the FBI and everybody else contradicted me, you know, and then they (laughs) all attacked me and they made, you know, they made my me me look bad. And so, you know, because most people don't want to live like that. They count on you to self-censor and yeah. to be intimidated and to be silenced. But unfortunately, this is, you know, these are, are um, I know what I'm doing as a reporter. I've been doing this for more than 35 years. It doesn't mean that I can't be wrong or make a mistake, but I'm not talking to one person. I'm talking to multiple people. I'm talking to people who did this and do this for a living. And who know, you know, who know every detail of that port and who knew the moment they saw that ship that when it wasn't in the channel and it was trying to make that turn, that there's no way on God's green earth that uh, that ship was uh, was the one that, you know, was on course. They know that. And it's so obvious. And by the way, our government knows this. And uh, this technique uh. is um, it can be used on any port and on any part of our critical infrastructure. So the implications are enormous. And what they, you know, this is the analysis of intelligence professionals is that what you're looking at is two things. One, it's testing and probing where, you know, our adversaries probe us to see and measure exactly how we respond so they know exactly what to expect. And moving forward, and then at the same time, it's stacking operations. So if you see that our critical infrastructure has been taking one hit after another, after another, and people know the truth, right? Mm-hmm. It's just like believing that, that mm-hmm. Joe Biden won the election from his basement, <laughs> right? <laughs> that, yeah. So when they see that they hear about, you know, um, ships that crash into bridges over and over again, we suddenly have a plethora 
of fires at you know food processing plants, and yeah, then hundreds, we have you know, Ohio train derailments, and mm-hmm. yes, and so we know that this is not normal. Right. We all know that we're hearing about you know things that are, are um, damaging our critical infrastructure. We know that we're hearing about this more than we ever have, and it's causing us concern. Yeah. It, you know, the same way we know that when you hand over eighty billion dollars of you know um, of advanced military equipment to a terrorist organization <laughs> that you've been fighting for more than 20 years. We know that's mm-hmm. not good for America's national security. Right. You know, we I, know this. It yeah. They can spin it all they want, but we know that it's not true. Yes. You've mentioned a lot of layers here, and I'm, I'm so glad you, you got in the mainstream media and the way you're treated in the mainstream media now. Uh, where, I mean, you were hailed as brilliant and courageous and award-winning back in the day, and now they've turned on you so hard and try to discredit you uh, and, as you said, create self-doubt in, in, your, in your own mind. Um, but what, I'm, what I wanted to ask you about was, you know, they treat you as if you changed greatly uh, from 60 Minutes <laughs> to today, was there a yeah. pivot point for you politically, or was this where you always were and we, you just talked about it less? No, I mean, there was no pivot point for me politically. I do every single thing today that I do journalistically. I did when I was a young reporter in South Africa, um, working in, in print media, and all the way through my career. You know what's interesting about the journalistic process? You guys will know this, right? Mm-hmm. There, there's only one way to, you know, the, the, people will say that there's more than one way to skin a cat. But interestingly, with journalism, it's a very simple process. There's some basic commandments, right, that we're all supposed to follow. So, you, you know, firsthand sources, eyewitness accounts, these are, are um, considered superior to people who are telling you, well, I was sitting there and I overheard what I thought someone was saying on the telephone or wait, let me see the Christopher Steele dossier, you know, not a single firsthand source. So, you know, that never changes. Right. So when I'm speaking to somebody that, for example, has worked in uh, Baltimore in law enforcement for 10, 20, 30 years, and they know intimately how the city works, what the significance is of the port, and so on and so on. Or when I'm working with someone who deals directly, you know, with cyber attacks, and um, or when I'm working with someone who is in intelligence now, and who can, who, whose bona fides I've established over 20 years, I know that these are important um, you know, firsthand sources, right, in, in the different aspects of what we're doing. And when I go to other sources independently and I verify these things, that's the same process. What I will tell you is that I, you know, when I was growing up, I believed in tolerance. I couldn't stand racism of any kind. I believe that you have to, you know, that principles are absolute. They're not bumper stickers. You don't pick them up and put them down, Mm -hmm. you know, and so on. And and so what I discovered many years ago at 60 Minutes when, you know, I was attacked over my Benghazi reporting, I discovered that things were not as they seemed. That happened when I was at 60 Minutes. It didn't happen after 60 Minutes. I discovered that organizations like Media Matters for America, which was run by David Brock at the time, Uh which was established by David Brock, that these organizations exist not as nonpartisan media watchdogs, which is what their website will tell you, but to destroy um, and 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 to go after anyone that gets in their way. They don't work for the left you know, or versus the right. These are um, these are distinctions, really, that we identify because they've been around for a very long time. But these people will go after their own, so to speak, right, as, as violently as they will go after anybody else. And yeah. they exist to destroy you. So, you know, this is if when you start to look at cancel culture and you realize, wow, this has actually been happening for a while. Go back to Bernie Carrick. Go back to Dinesh D'Souza. When you mm-hmm. go back to these people, they were early victims in this fight. I mean, I was one of the earlier compared to people who are just finding out now because I've been in this fight for more than a decade, but it it started when I was at 60 minutes. And what I will tell you is I am the same person. I still believe in tolerance. I still can't stand racism, but I'm not going to participate in a mass delusion, right? Which is essentially Mm -hmm. what we're being asked to do is to participate in something that is blatantly false. I mean, there are not more than two genders. And you can say whatever you like. <laughs> you can come up with as many as you want. And the reality is 
that, you know, when they dig up your bones 50 mm-hmm. years from now, 100 years from now, they're going to say if you were male or female. And I'm not going to participate in their mass delusion. Absolutely. I'm not at any cost. Uh, we're speaking, uh, Laura, we, we, we have about a minute here. Um, but uh, is there something that your sources are saying we should be doing to prevent this kind of thing in the future? Uh, attacks on our infrastructure like this? Oh, I mean, yes, of course. I mean, universally, everybody I speak to says that cyber command um, is a mess, that we are yeah. not in a strong position to defend ourselves when it comes to cyber attacks, that we are especially vulnerable. Um, I've spoken to other very high place, high place sources at Space Command who are absolutely horrified at the mess in space, um, who are pre- presenting solutions and who have been who have been told that we do not want overmatch in our abilities in space. We want parity with our adversaries. Yep. And what you are seeing across the board, whether it is the what is the nuclear monitoring program systems that we have had in place at the State Department for years that were turned off under Obama, or whether it's the um, you know the sort of advanced surveillance technology that was aboard aircraft that made it out of Afghanistan that Afghan pilots actually managed to get to safety in Uzbekistan that was returned to the Taliban that was actually taken to the Taliban and given to them. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't matter. All over, what you're seeing is that the, the defenses of the United States of America are being depleted or dismantled Scary. or crippled. Laura, and we are not doing anything about it. Last thing, more yep, than 400,000 barrels of our strategic reserve has been used up. That is more than 60% yep. of our strategic oil reserve has been used and never been replaced. Laura so Logan, you can find her on problem. Instagram and X. Fascinating stuff. Make sure you check out her work. Thank you. This is Pat Gray Unleashed.